Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at this nice little Elna Lotus TSP. So this machine has come in because of tension issues. If we take a close look here, we've got the top here. If we have a look underneath, we've got a green bobbin thread. And you'll see that the top, the red thread is coming through from the top. And the bobbin thread is pulling reasonably tight as well. So that's an indication that either the uh, the bobbin thread's too tight or the top thread is too loose or a bit of both. So the first thing to check really is the top thread I would say there. It, it doesn't, um, th there's definitely a problem with the with the top thread tension there and you can see we're, we're set to five there. If, if I just have a quick feel of the, the bobbin thread there. It is feeling a little bit tight, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. The top thread here, it's not a valid test to check your top thread tension with the presser foot lifted. And you'll see there that the presser foot is in the up position. The tension release here with the foot raised is actually by design. So there's a mechanism in here and behind here that um, releases the tension here and just allows you to you know when you're removing the removing the fabric from the uh, machine you know it allows you to easily pull the thread out so what we probably want to do is unthread the needle because uh, checking the thread tension with the needle th threaded can flex the needle Let's get more of a side-on view here. We're looking from the left of the machine and if I drop the presser foot there and pull the thread there is that, that thread tension is way too light and that you know that's straight away that explains this sort of carry on here. We're looking at the bottom here with a red thread coming through. Looks fine on the top sort of, but not very good underneath. And this here being so light, I mean by rights that should be flexing the needle, you know, if I put a bit of tension on there, that, that should be flexing the needle quite a bit, like that, when I pull the thread through. It's difficult to say exactly how much that should be flexing, but you know, you, you shouldn't be able to pull the thread through like that without it bending the needle. It's, it, it's slightly bending it, not much. But there's, there's hardly any tension. So either this tensioner is out of adjustment or there's a bit of gunk uh, holding the tension discs open as I explained in um, part one. So what we'll do in this part two is it's a different uh, type of machine to part one so it's just a, a generalization really uh, when it comes to tension but in this particular machine we can pull the um, well, what, what we can try first of all is what, what I tried in uh, part one there and just run a, a piece of fabric around the in between the tension discs there and see whether that clears the you know foreign matter. Be, it could be lint or thread or something jammed in there. Um, but if I lift the presser foot, you might be able to see this. If I lift the presser foot now, you may see the tensioner just come out slightly. That's the tension release mechanism. So that should be clamping the thread there now, and it's not. So uh, let, let's try the, you know, the, the, the quick and dirty trick of um, just running a bit of fabric around there, in between the discs, to see whether that will fix the problem. And as I said in the other video, it's it is sort of a a temporary fix. I mean, you might be lucky to get some of the, the gunk out of there, but if we just double something over, a piece of fabric over there, get the fabric in there, just run it around like that, go right around the tensioner. You can see quite a bit of gunk actually coming out there, it's quite dirty. Now you won't be able to come right around 
up into this area here because there's a, a little plate and a spring there. So you won't be able to get right around the disc. That may have fixed the problem. Let's just re-thread. We only really need to re-thread around the tensioner disc there. We don't need to thread the entire machine. And drop the press foot down. Yeah, it, it's better, but it's still not, tension's still not as good as I'd expect it to be. Yeah, it's still very light. So, time to um, take the tensioner apart and give it a really good deep clean. So we need a posi drive screwdriver. If you don't have a posi drive screwdriver, a Phillips will do at a pinch. I have explained in other videos the differences between posi drive and Phillips. Um, I won't go into it too too much here, but suffice it to say that they are slightly different. They look very similar, but they are slightly different. Okay, so this uh, particular tensioner is not going to be all that difficult to um, pull apart. So first of all we just take the cap off there and if we have a close look at the threading here you'll see how the thread comes around and in between the discs and then up and over this little plate here down and under this spring. And that's called the check spring. So that, that just provides a little bit of extra um, slack in the system really. So when we thread this come in between the discs and you just pull up and the thread will slip over the plate and will automatically be positioned correctly there. So I think the easiest way to get access to this is to take the, the lid here off. I'm not sure why Alna decided to use a mixture of Phillips and PosiDrive screws. Four screws there, just lift that straight off. And then if we look down level, down here level with the tensioner here, there's the tensioner disc here. If we have a look straight down here, we'll see that there's an Allen grub screw there. So if we loosen that, we'll be able to get the entire assembly out. Looks like a two millimeter. Yep. That's very tight. That is extremely tight. I've got a funny feeling that this might bend the key. Ooh, that got it. I was surprised. Yeah, that, that these are a good quality Allen key. Uh, you wouldn't want to attempt that with a, a low quality Allen key. It would possibly, uh, you know, damage the actual grub screw. If it damaged the grub screw, that's kind of worst case scenario because it could make it very difficult to get that grub screw out if it's been damaged. The, the not so uh, bad scenario is you just damage and bend your key, twist your key. Now if I've loosened that grub screw enough, which I think should should be fine, this whole mechanism here should just pop out. Okay, so this is the entire mechanism. So in here is the tension release lever and that's linked up to the presser foot lifter so you might be able to see this moving when I, if I just bring the angle around there just moving the press foot lifter up and down and you can see it's slightly moving there and what that does is when you lift the presser foot it pushes this shaft here and that releases the tension on these discs here. So this shaft pushes here and releases the tension here. That is that tension for the this, this little check spring here. That spring tension there is set 
I might be able to see that the little end of the spring is poking through here and there's different positions it can go in these little notches here. This side here is less tension and if we put that spring up over here into this side that's more tension on this check spring. So this, this, this is the main tension spring here and what that does is it pushes against this sort of a nylon type um, nut here if you like which is screwed onto the shaft here and that in turn pulls this uh, this nut here on the shaft against the this tension disc here so when you tighten the tension you'll see this nylon nut here coming up the shaft and that will be compressing the spring there tighten that so you can see there that the spring is nearly fully compressed so that'll be high tension like say number nine somewhere around there and if I unscrew that you'll see it come back down again yeah, that's loose tension there now. Now, um, to get this apart, you just keep unscrewing, and that nylon nut will come off the shaft there along with the spring. And then you'll also see a, a circlip here. So we'll whip the circlip off. That should just pop pop out there and you'll see that the tension discs there are located in little there's a little uh, bar here and there's cutouts in the tension discs you might be able to see there and those little cutouts locate on that bar so that this makes um, you know this very nice and easy to maintain so if we have another look here at the check spring. The spring is just wound around in here. We don't really need to touch that. I mean that looks fairly clean. I would probably just you know give that a little wipe just to clean this clean this little bar here up. Yep, I just set that aside. That looks pretty good. Now what we want to look at is we want to look at this yeah. So running the rag around in there didn't quite get to some of the stubborn grime here. Take the other disc off. You can see it's pretty grimy. I think that's a like rust oxidized. I'd say I'd say it's probably been I'd say it's probably been sitting for a while and maybe a little bit damp. It is. I think it might scrape off. Let's just maybe try scraping it with a screwdriver. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nasty there. That I think actually needs going over with a um, an oil stone. So, I mean, not everyone's going to have an oil stone, but it's actually corroded. There you go. A little close up there. Yeah, it's actually corroded the. Um, the disc there. I think I can probably clean that up well enough. It's, it's not perfect. I mean by rights they should be replaced. Um, but I'll show you how I clean those up. Okay, this is an oil stone. India combination oil stone. So we've got a fine uh, layer on the top here and this is a coarse layer here. Made in the USA. Can't go wrong. I wonder if they still make these in the USA. So the, the purpose of an oil stone is that you've got this flat surface here and with some oil, let's get a bit of oil on there and with the disc face down just 
give that a Bit of clean up there. Yeah, it's going to need a bit of work, I think. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get this perfect. Uh, it, and in, with industrial machines, because they get used so much, the thread actually wears grooves in these tension discs, so they need to be, you know, resurfaced just by doing this here. That's starting to clean up, not too badly. Yeah, that's starting to clean up. It's going to move to a different point on the stone there so that it doesn't wear une unevenly. Yeah, that's, that is coming right. It's pretty good. So I'll come back when these uh, two here are finished off. I'll do that one as well. It's looking pretty good. There now. They're not absolutely perfect, but I think, you know, I don't want to be here all day. Um, I think that is going to work fine, no problem. And when you're finished with your oil stone, you just wipe it clean. Just like that. And let's have a close look here. It's looking pretty good. Could probably get that better but I don't want to wear the disc away too much either. The other one there. It's this surface here that's the important part. You can see a little bit of corrosion down in, in here still, but it's not too much of a problem. So we'll go ahead and um, put all this back together. Now that tension discs go this way here so that the two flat surfaces come together and just locate that onto the tensioner there, that one there, that one there, put this shaft back in here, that, put the circlet back on and then tensioner here. Just screw that back on. You just be careful not to cross the threads when you're screwing that on. So that is ready to put back into the machine there. Find a toothbrush. An old toothbrush is really handy for getting into these little nooks and crannies and cleaning. Now there's a locator here that stops this whole thing from just turning like that. This nylon uh, nut here needs to be kept stationary. So the so this little locator here goes in on that bar there. And you should be able to see that from the top. that. Let's give it a give it a wee wiggle there just to make sure it's right in. Here we go. So the check spring is on the left here at about nine o'clock and then once that's securely in there make sure it goes right back to the um, stopper and then it's just a matter of tightening the grub screw there. Hold that in while you tighten it. I'm not going to tighten that as tight as they did it in the factory. I don't think it's necessary to be that tight. So now we're ready to test sew. So what I'll do is I'll set the tension here just by turning this nut here and then once I get the tension set I'll put the, the end cap on here. So let's do that. 
put the lid back on here. Just uh, note when you're putting the lid on, this front left screw here actually also retains this little retainer. This is not a very good example because the little plastic end has come off this one. Uh, but this is the little latch here that holds the plate in here. So the easiest way to adjust that is to put that end plate on, the end cover, and then screw the screw, tighten the screw here. You can adjust this here. As I say, this one's missing the little plastic end there. And that way you can adjust that in so that this is snug against the side of the machine. Just go ahead and get your screws back in. Thread up. I'm only going to go as far as the tensioner here and maybe just over the take-up lever so I'm using that as a, um, a judge there as to how tight that should be. Now I can feel that that is actually quite tight. It's too tight. That's too loose. Make sure to press foot down. Just going to judge this. You don't need to turn this much. As you can see on the dial, it only takes one turn to go through the full range there. That feels about right. As I say, if you do this a little bit with your machine, you get you get to know what that tension should feel like. Okay, so I think that's all right. Um, bobbin tension, I think is okay. Feels all right. General rule of thumb is that the bobbin tension will be quite a bit lighter than your top tension here. Zigzag's quite good for picking up whether your tension's correct or not. Press foot, it releases the tension, so you can just pull out your fabric. It's looking a lot better. I think that's pretty good. I mean, there's a very small amount of red coming through, but I, I think you'd rather have red coming through underneath than the green coming up from the bottom. Um, I guess it really depends whether you're sewing on the bottom or the top of the fabric on the right or the wrong side, but that looks pretty good there. It, it's pulling in a little bit on the zigzag here on the top, but I mean this is quite sort of lightweight material. Now this is about uh, one, two, three, this is about eight layers of fabric. <laughs> I think that's that's pretty good. So now we can just go ahead and put the dial on and put the screw back in. Just so as far as serviceability goes in respect to the tension disc here or the tension assembly, that is pretty easy compared to some of the other machines I deal with. It's quite nice, easily accessible, very easy to set, to, you know, easy to remove and install again. And in general, serviceability of the Elna Lotus uh, line of machines is very good, very easy. There's not much that goes wrong with these. So yeah, I uh, hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching.